So just between you and me, where is that in the docks? Because I it. have not been able to find it. Really? Yes. No way. Mm -hmm. Yes way. This is this is quality television, folks. See so one, take one, Mark. How's it going, Firebase developers? Welcome back to another episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I'm your host, Jen Person, and today my co-host is Malcolm Deck. Hey everybody, I'm still working on the Firebase authentication team, trying to provide you easy ways to log your users into your apps. Great, because I've gathered some new auth questions. Are you ready to answer them? So ready. Let's get started. All right. I love this question. Oh, yes. I'm pumped. Oh. Let's do it. Would there be any downsides to not building a sign out button for an app? Just thinking along the lines of phone verifications quota and considering that an app is solely built on a phone auth as primary and assuming a single user is going to use it always. Right. So this is actually a fairly complicated question. There's lots of little pieces to it. But the first thing to remember is that you actually have 10,000 free verifications for phone authentication every month before you start getting charged. So until your app gets pretty big, that should cover most use cases. Also worth remembering is that unless your users are choosing to sign out, the sessions that you have remain forever. They're persistent. So in that respect, unless you expect users, even if you provide a sign out button, to be signing out a bunch, then you should be all right. However, let's consider what the use cases are for having a sign out button. What needs does that address? And that'll help you decide whether or not you want one. So a sign out button for phone authentication in particular is useful when several people are sharing a device. For example, a tablet that everybody uses at home. I want to be able to play the game with my phone number. Jen wants to be able to play the game with her phone number. That allows us to both log in and out. Or I want to show a friend of mine a cool app. I need to sign out, you know, hand them my phone real quick for them to be able to do something. They want to check their bank account balance or something and it's keyed by phone number. Allowing people to sign out does that. Another question worth asking yourself is, if you're already assuming that there's only one user per device, if you don't have a specific need for their phone number, it might be worth just using anonymous authentication, where that is a per device session. Yeah, that's a really good point. So one thing I really like about this question is how much detail they included about their use case. That actually is really helpful for us, because you're able to really tailor your answer to the specific needs that you're looking for. So keep that in mind if you have questions for us. We love to hear a little bit more about your use case because then we can give you um, a more specific solution. All right, Jen, I think I've got a question for you now. Are you ready? All right, let me roll up my sleeves. <laughs> Umesh Kumar asks, how can I use in-app messaging to send notifications to single devices rather than multiple devices, similar to a push notification? Thank you for your question, Umesh. That's a great question. And I think one thing right off the bat that strikes me about this is that you're saying using it to send a notification. And that tells me that you're looking at a use case where Firebase cloud messaging may be more useful. But let's put that to the side for the moment and talk about Firebase in-app messaging. Firebase in-app messaging uh, is uh, messages that appear inside your app in response to specific events being triggered. And rather than them being pushed all the time, your app periodically checks to see if there are new messages that need to be stored locally that are then going to appear uh, when their analytics event is triggered. So it's not so much in the sense that messages are constantly coming in. Now, you can actually send to a single device um, using an instance ID which you'll see in the console. However, this is more for testing purposes. So if that's what you're looking for, you really want to test to make sure your uh, in-app message is showing up properly, you can use your device's instance ID. But it's not really something that you can do um, across the board sending specific messages to different instance IDs. And if that's kind of the use case you're looking for, I recommend you use Firebase Cloud Messaging. The reason you're probably thinking in-app messaging is because you're thinking, I want to have a message appear when I'm actually in the app. And when we think of cloud messaging, we probably think of those notifications, those push notifications that show up when you're not inside the app. However, Firebase cloud messaging also gives you access to uh, data messages. So what that enables you to do is send some data information, whatever key value pairs you want, to your application, and then you can handle displaying them however you choose to do so. So um, in general, I'd say, yes, you can uh, send to a single app using instance ID, similar to sending a notification, but that is for testing purposes. If you need to do this on a more regular basis, I recommend that you use Firebase Cloud Messaging, send a data message, and uh, configure yourself how you want that message to appear 
within the application. So Malcolm, I'm so glad you're here because I want to ask you about what is new in Firebase Auth. So the first thing that just came out is what we're calling generic IDP sign-in, which is going to be sign-in that looks very similar to uh, web-based sign-in in in your mobile application. So what are the benefits of generic IDP sign-in? Well, there are several. First of all, it allows us to to support new providers like Yahoo and Microsoft, which we've added to the console. Keep sending us more requests for providers that you want to see, uh, and we will get to adding them over time. The other thing that this allows is for us to allow you to continue to support Twitter sign-in. Twitter kit is being deprecated and you need another way for your app to continue to interface with your Twitter-based users. Generic IDP allows for that. The other benefit that this provides is that sign-in methods for several different providers will look more similar to you as a developer so that you can continue getting back to the core functionality of your app and let your users sign in however they want to. Very cool, I'm super excited about this. I'd say Firebase Auth, uh, comparatively speaking, is uh, simpler to implement than other um, sign-in methods. However, this takes it yet to another level of um, making things much easier on the developer. Right, we've put a lot of work in to make sure that you don't have to deal with the complications of mobile operating systems for a lot of the tricky parts of this. So hopefully implementation on your end will be really easy and we'll worry about all the difficult parts. You'll worry about it. (laughs) We actually have one other exciting thing in Firebase to announce right now, which is that we have uh, integration with risk. So what that means is for your Google based users, when a uh, malicious sign in happens on their Google account, it will automatically send them out of their Google-based Firebase account. So your users will be protected across all applications for Google accounts. We're really excited about that. We want to help keep everybody safe. That's the whole reason you have a login system in the first place, right? Yeah, definitely. That's a really cool feature. Wow, so this is really exciting. I can't wait to see what new providers are added in the future and what features you have. I'll definitely have to have you back on the show to tell me what else is new in the future. We have a lot of exciting stuff coming. Keep an eye out both at Google I.O. and at Cloud Next to hear what else is coming for Firebase authentication. Cool. Malcolm, thanks so much for coming on the show. It's always a pleasure to have you here. And thank all of you that provided us with questions. We really can't make the show without you. So remember, if you have a query about Firebase, be sure to tag it on social media with the hashtag AskFirebase. That makes it more visible to us and I can get it to the people that can answer it. And who knows, you might even see it on a future episode. And if you like the content you see here, be sure to subscribe to the Firebase YouTube channel for all sorts of other great videos. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on a future episode. Bye-bye. Okay. It's uh, great. Thank you. I learned so much. Thank you for doing that. So now we don't have to. We're like, that was easy.